Hi everybody, my name is Brandon Toombs and I am an Employee Central Consultant. So today we're going to be going through part three of our Integration Center series um, and we're going to be talking about scheduling and filtering. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, welcome back to our series on Success Factors Integration Center. Uh, this session is going to be on scheduling and filtering. So where we're at in this series um, is we're in part three. Part one, we went through kind of an overview of what uh, capabilities are. Uh, part two, we uh, got started, which was we defined our starting entity and uh, talked about the process of adding fields to our uh, integration. Uh, so next, we are going to be talking about scheduling our job, um, setting up the destination, as well as how do we filter uh, our integration. So let's jump right in and do that. All right, so we're back in our demo system. Uh, going to Integration Center. Uh, my integrations and now we are going to go back to our demo integration that we have set up so you can see here we got it all set up um, we added the fields last time so that you can you can see here uh, when we get to this screen there's already data populated and so now we're going to talk about um, uh, first, we're, first, what we're going to do is talk about how do we set up our destination. So uh, our destination is something that um, you're going to need help on as far as like uh, determining what the destination is. Uh, so, so Success Factor is going to provide you, uh, as part of your license, the ability to have um, one, uh, a, a, at least a couple of uh, SFTP destinations on their servers. So. Uh, for companies that want to use that, that's great. If you have your own destinations uh, that you want to send you know, the files to, that works as well. Um, and then, of course, your vendor that you're working with may have may also have uh, a destination that they want. So, um, as far as what we're showing in this video, this is, we're just going to show kind of the basics of setting up a. Uh, a destination. Uh, of course, your process may be a little bit more complex if you're going to use file encryption or some some other uh, tools that are out there that that uh, make the process maybe a little bit more secure. But we're going to do kind of the basics here uh, as part of this video. So um, you can see here, I've already filled this in uh, the details. So you'll get this from you know, your your destination. In this case, we're just using the uh, one of the delivered um, uh, provided uh, SFTP feet, uh, SFTP um, destinations uh, we put in the username and password already again you'll get that from their provider and then we have added in the name and the uh, the, the file name and then also we're adding a suffix um, and so that that makes sure that the file that you're sending is going to be unique every time that it, that you do not have to add that you just have to have a the name if you want to just overlay the one that's already there you can do that uh, depending on what your requirements are put in the extension, and in our case, we're going to uh, send it to file folder, outgoing demo. Um, so that is pretty much it as far as setting this up. Now, um, I'm just gonna show what the process looks like to actually just run the program. So I will click here, and then I will go to next, and then I'm just gonna click run now. Um, so you can see here, this has already got kind of the listing of all the things that are gonna happen as part of the process. Um, I'm going to hit run now. I'm not going to schedule the job. I'm going to show how I can just uh, run the job on demand. Save and continue. Well, I'm going to do that. Integration saved successfully and the job was submitted. So you can see here this is a, uh, this is a, a run that I did previously. Um, and so now we're going to be waiting for this to update with um, a, an updated date uh, in time. So as soon as that happens, uh, we'll give it a minute. Uh, 
Okay, so you can see that it went from 10.06 to 10.29, which means the process has run. You can see that the little green thing says that green means that it was successful. So I can go, if I wanted to, I could go all the way out and go into the monitoring section and see what it looks like there. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to click on this link and it will take me right to that, to that run. And then you can see here, it's going to tell you exactly how the process went. So it's going to start the execution. It's pulling first the, uh, uh, it's pulling a thousand records at a time. So it's processed a thousand, then it processed an another 197, and then, uh, and then it completes out the process. So that is uh, great. We've got the file loaded. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you an SFTP client, um, and so this will vary based on whatever your uh, whatever you use um, at your organization. I'm using something called Transmit for Apple. Um, you know there are FileZilla, FileZilla. There's a lot of other thing, tools that are out there. But basically, all I did is I put in the ID, password, and destination, and I can actually get to uh, that SFTP folder so that I can download the file. Uh, so you can see here, this is um, this is the these are runs that I had done previously. I'm going to click refresh, and you'll see that my new file uh, has been populated here. So if I wanted to just jump, just quickly show what that looks like, I downloaded the file, and I can run it, or I can hold on, no stop. I always do that. It uh, asks me if I want to replace it. So I'm instead what I need to do is go into my file manager. And I'm just going to pull it. So I just downloaded this file, and you can see that, voila, the file shows up. And you can see that we've got uh, information across the top there. This has got our, our header that we defined, and then the fields. So, okay, so that is how we can set up the destination. So that's part one of what we want to cover today. Um, but that is not all we are going to cover. Um, I am going to also now go in and talk about another couple of topics that are important to this process. Um, the first one I'm going to uh, talk about is just scheduling the job. Um, so scheduling the job is semi-intuitive, um, but I want to, there are, there's um, something that you have to pay really close attention to or the process, you'll, you'll think that you have uh, saved the job uh, or you will have saved the job, but you will not have scheduled the latest and greatest version of the job. Um, so I'm going to show you the process that you need to follow in order to make sure that you are getting all of the information in there. So I'm just going to, uh, all I'm doing is just um, tweaking this uh, slightly. And really what I'm going to do, I think what I'll do is I'll just change one of the labels slightly to make sure that it recognizes that there's been a change and it's going to, I'm going to save. Um, the, uh, well, no, it, I did change the integration. Hold on. Oh, I, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to actually press return when I did this and it did not notice the change. So there you go. Now it's going to have, now there will be a change. So I will hit save on this and the integration is saved successfully. Now what I need to do is um, I need to go in and I've got my destination setting set up, but I need to set up the scheduling. So right now the scheduling is not set up at all. I want to just say, let's just say I want to run this daily. Uh, I, you can run it for different uh, periods um, as per the list there. Um, just do the start date um, and then I can do whenever. I'll just, uh, actually you don't have to put this in. Normally we won't put this in. Um, and of course you're gonna need to put the start time slightly in the future. Um, of course, if you're setting this up to run overnight, you would just put in uh, the time that you want to run it uh, overnight and it would, it would run then. Uh, so I am going to, uh, Press save now, and there are no changes to the integration. You, uh, yeah, it's it's asking me, do I want to uh, make, do I not want to make changes? I do want to make changes. Now, what I've done is I've I've hit uh, I've scheduled I've done scheduling, but I have not set the schedule yet. So if I press save right now, it doesn't even really uh, it hasn't acknowledged the change. So I need to set schedule. That is the important part. You have to set schedule in order to make sure that the job is actually scheduled. Now click over here. The other thing that you need to verify 
is when you when you're done with your process the scheduled version and the current version should be the same so always click over and just make sure that your scheduled version and current version are, are, are the same because what you can what will happen sometimes is you will sa make a save you will save a field change uh, to your uh, interface and you will think that it is because I've already ch I've changed this the um, my current I, I've changed the uh, integration that the next time it runs it's going to pick up that change it will not it will only uh, pick up that change if uh, after I make the change I go into scheduling and I reschedule the job and then I set schedule and you'll know you that has not taken place if your scheduled version and current version are not the same uh, so your scheduled version would be version 9 and your current version is uh, version 10 that if you see that that means that your change that you just made isn't going to get picked up and I, I I'm, cannot emphasize this enough because this will come back to bite you it's, it's done it's done it to me unfortunately on a couple of different occasions because I just uh, I'm in a hurry and I don't pay attention so be very careful with that okay so that is that's the process of scheduling it's it's pretty simple and straightforward um, and so that's that's what you would go through next I want to talk about filtering so filtering there are um, a, a couple of key things that you need to know about filtering so first off um, I'm going to just show uh, the basics of it so let's just say that we want to I'm trying to come up with something that's uh, got uh, I, the I'm going to say let's give me uh, all the people that are in St. Petersburg and that's uh, I want to do my filter based on that so um, that would be I can go under advanced filters you can see here there's uh, ability to do if I want to add I can do and or type of filtering so it's not just a, a, a single value that I can filter on I can uh, filter on uh, multiple values but for here I'm just going to keep it simple um, and then I'm just going to select name location and is equal to St. Petersburg and now when I go back over so now I've got this in place and just to test and, and verify that my change is there I'm gonna go back over to configure fields and you should see here that now the locations are all showing St. Petersburg so you can see in real time that your change has been reflected um, so that's that's how I can do just a really really simple filter um, next thing I'm going to show you is another filter that that uh, is really common that you're going to that you may need to use and that is let's say that you have a vendor that you need to send both active and inactive employees to um, that then you have to go through a specific process to make sure that the inactive and actives get get sent by default the only uh, active uh, user records get get picked up by uh, most of the uh, starting entities um, I believe that that's not the case for all of them but for most of them uh, your active records will only get picked up so this process that I'm going to show you now is how I make sure that the inactives are also going to get picked up so I'm gonna go in here I'm going to and, and I have to uh, search through and um, I'm starting it per person and however it is that you need to get navigate to the user that's what you need to do so I'm going to select I'm going to go in here uh, in this case I know that I will I will navigate from user account to user uh, and then again depending on where you start from uh, you may uh, you know, the process you're going to need to use in order to get to user is going to be slightly different I believe that if you start at job information or if job then you'll right off of your core navigation you're going to see a user um, a, a user navigation right there so it should be really simple but that's not the case on this one where I start it per person I have to navigate uh, I t take an extra hop to get where I need to go so now I'm going to scroll down to the status field okay I'm going a little far if I can get it there oh there it is sorry I took you on a little bit of a wild goose chase there but now I've selected my status and so you can see here status under user is equal to it's not what we want we actually want is contained in and then it should be active inactive so this is the way that the um, 
this is the way that you express that you want multiple statuses. And this is off of the basic employee file uh, employee status. So that's what we're trying to say is give me both types, uh, both active and inactive. So that is what we want. So I, uh, if I set that in, then I uh, will make sure that I get actives and inactives. The other filter we want to talk about real quick it, are the time-based filters. And the time-based filters are used for your Delta uh, uh, interfaces. So this is used when uh, the vendor doesn't want every record every time. They want only the records that have changed. And it's really pretty simple to set up within success factors. Uh, I would go into time-based filters. I would select modified or effective sense um, and you have to make sure that this is that this is set over here where it should say last runtime um, these are the you have fixed date you have now um, but of course what we want is last runtime so we would select that um, and you can see here this is this uh, identifies when was the last time that the interface was run uh, so that timestamp changes every time that you run the interface um, and then, uh, so once I do that, it is going, if I go back over to configure fields, you can see here that I've made one small change um, uh, over the last uh, few minutes just to see what that would look like uh, when you go come in here to the Delta and, and you can see here that it only shows that one specific record. So um, that is also pretty uh, easy to set up. Um, and then of course, uh, once you're done, you need to make sure that you update your interface based on that change. So I'm gonna show that change again uh, that process again just so that we can get that kind of seared in our brain and also to kind of let you see what the process looks like when we already have something scheduled so I'm gonna hit save and you can see that something it says uh, an older version of the integration is already scheduled click save and continue if you want to save your changes so I'm gonna hit save and schedule you'll notice that it's going to pop me to the scheduling page and it says that the integration is saved successfully, but even though it's saved successfully, if I'm gonna go over and show you real quick that the scheduled version is a lower version. I've actually been playing around a little bit, so that's why there's such a discrepancy, but the main thing to notice here is that, th that the current version is 17, but we're actually running an older version. So we need to go into scheduling, and we will select, uh, we, we can't run uh, the interface in the past. So I'm just gonna update the uh, for a future time. So I've put that into the system. And now I will go in and I am going to uh, select uh, the, uh, I will hit uh, set schedule. And you'll see that the job was submitted. So, so we're in good shape. Now, if we go back over here, you can see here that the scheduled and current version are the same. So uh, hopefully this little tour through uh, integration center scheduling and filtering uh, will help you see uh, you know, the processes by which you can uh, filter your records, schedule them. Uh, overall, the process is pretty uh, simple and straightforward.